I have been reading this book, which is the Quran. And if you know me, you know I'm really interested in like religion, philosophy, anything like that. So I was really excited to read this, especially and compare it with the Bible. Christianity and Islam are from the same branch of religions called Abrahamic religions. They have a lot of similarities, also some differences. And I think it's going to be really good to compare it. I've been reading some of it, so I want to talk to you about what I've read, what I think of it. So I'm really excited to share this with you. The Quran was written about 1,400 years ago, and it was written in classical Arabic, so basically old-fashioned Arabic, and obviously it's a holy book of Islam, it's believed to be the word of God, and it's divided into many, many chapters, many chapters, called surahs, and I have read a few, I've been reading it on my train journeys to Mubon Latina when I'm free. And I'm really excited to share with you some of the things I've found and discuss with you. So the first chapter is called The Opening. Uh, let me just find it past all these introduction pages. <laughs> Where is it? Okay, so the Quran. First bit is called The Opening. It's a very really short chapter, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, it just says, so I know that people like, um, Richard Dawkins will say they're going to not treat religion with kid gloves, they're just going to analyse it and criticise it as they would anything else, but I don't know, I personally believe any sort of religion deserves some sort of degree of respect for it, and coming from a Christian background myself, I am really interested to read this and compare it with Christianity, and a lot of my friends are Muslim, and by reading this as well, I don't... I feel like a lot of white people will do things that are like get in touch with other cultures and then they'll expect loads of praise and respect for it and that is not where I'm coming from at all. I'm genuinely reading this because I'm interested in it and I really want to compare it and I hope that by reading this I can encourage other white people perhaps to pick up the Quran for themselves, learn more about a religion that they might be unfamiliar with. Because I think by reading something like this it helps you understand other people and it will help me understand Islam a lot more, help me understand my Muslim friends and things like that and also it, see it's such a great piece of literature like this is 1,400 years old, that's crazy, you don't think that is the coolest thing ever. Anyway so let's get to it. So. The first chapter is just like an opening, it just says in the name of God, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy, praise belongs to God. This is an English translation, not a bit, I can't read classical Arabic, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> it is you we worship, it is you we ask for help, guide us to the straight path, the path of those you have blessed, those who can go and get no have not gone astray. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, also, I'm filming this outside. I don't know first outside felt. It's a really nice day today, so I only felt a bit appropriate. Okay, so the second chapter is called The Cow. I don't know why it's called The Cow, and from what I've gathered from reading this chapter, it gives you a lot of rules and it tells you a bit about the history of Islam and things. And I might get all the rules, well, not all of them, but a lot of the rules here are basically in one place. <laughs> So it, it does spell it out to you a lot more than I'd say the Bible does. It's definitely a lot more clear. There's some bits I really, really like and I need to try and find it to show you. Oh yeah, um, I asked a lot of my Muslim friends for help and guidance before I read this as to what chapters are good. Well, better. Well, ones they prefer over the others. And they help me a lot, so it's been a really useful starting point, so thank you. I really like in the Quran that not all the rules are really strict. I like, um, so for example, it says here, God has only forbidden you carrion, blood, pigs, meat and animals over which any name other than God's has been invoked. But if anyone is forced to eat such things by hunger rather than desire or excess, he commits no sin. God is most merciful and forgiving. And I really like that bit because it says you should try to eat halal meat. But if you're stuck on a deserted island and the only thing on this island are pigs or something then God is merciful and he, and he will forgive you. He knows that you would know other option and I think that's a really nice bit to put in there. 
it does make it a lot more clear that we shouldn't judge people for doing things because they have to that God will forgive you if he if he knows that it's the only thing you could have done if that makes sense so I really like that bit another part that was recommended to me was this chapter which is about Mary and it's really cool this chapter because obviously it's the same as Mary the Virgin Mary in the Bible and she's in the Quran as well crossover <laughs> or something it's really cool because obviously Mary's in the Bible as well so it's cool to read this and see um, what this says about Mary and it's pretty much the same it's, it actually seems to say a bit more detail than perhaps I'll remember uh, Gabriel appears to Mary he says she's going to have a son obviously in the Quran Jesus is not um, considered the son of God he's considered very holy and like a prophet I believe but he's not considered he doesn't have the same status as in Christianity so one interesting thing that definitely was not in Christianity is um God says to Mary um say to anyone you may see I have vowed to the Lord of mercy God to abstain from conversation and I will not talk to anyone today and this is just after she's given birth to Jesus She's gone to a palm tree. She's given birth to Jesus. God has given her some dates to eat. And he has told her, don't speak to anyone for the rest of the day. She's like, okay. So she goes back to her family and she's carrying Jesus. And they say, Mary, what have you done? You, you've had a child. And oh, there's a spider. <sighs> <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> it was on my phone. What was I was say. So... She went back to her family, carrying Jesus, and they said, Mary, you've done something really bad. You've, you've had a child, but it's not with Joseph. What, 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 what is going on? And Mary couldn't respond to any of this, so she just, like, points to Jesus. She's like... <laughs> and they were like, how can we converse with an infant? And then this bit... <sighs> Sorry, there's a little spider. I don't know where they're coming from. And then this bit here says that Jesus, baby Jesus, he's like less than a day old then spoke to the family and said I am a servant of God he has granted me the scripture made me a prophet made me blessed wherever I may be he commanded me to pray to give alms as long as I live to cherish my mother so it's meant to me that Jesus spoke here when he was a baby which is interesting I mean it's not more unreasonable than in the Bible where Jesus walks on water. I mean, that, that bit wasn't in the Bible. Um, but there are some different interpretations of that. It says here in the footnotes that some suggest that Muhammad is ordered to make the statement, others that it is Jesus speaking because the Quran was God dictating to Muhammad what to say and Muhammad was writing it all down. I think the Prophet Muhammad was writing it all down. So there are some bits where it might not be a bit clear whether it's um, Mohammed's point of view, I guess, saying that, or if it's, yeah, it's it's not 100% clear with things like that. There's different interpretations. Um, if you're Muslim, comment below your interpretation of this. Okay, and the last bit that I've had time to read is uh, Surah 55, which is called The Lord of Mercy. And I believe the person who recommended uh, this to me said that it helps them feel like God is with them in a in tough time so I was quite excited I guess to read this so this one talks about what paradise is like and after every pretty much after every sentence it says which then of your Lord's blessings do you both deny and I quite like that because it I don't know it just felt it felt quite emotive even to me, not as, even though I wasn't a Muslim, this, this one in particular felt quite emotive to me, so I was quite interested to read this. So it describes a beautiful paradise, saying every kind of fruit, um, gardens with springs, and date palms and pomegranate trees basically painting a beautiful paradise and it contrasts that with hell essentially saying like when the sky is split and turns crimson everyone on, everyone on earth perishes uh, a flash of fire and smoke will be released upon you and no one will come to your aid 
and after every sentence of this it will say which then of your lord's blessings do you both deny so i think it, lately i have been reading this book which is the quran and if you know me you know i'm really interested in like really